Well, good day, Max there again. Welcome back to the shop. Well, it's winter over here in Perth, so it's a jacket, two jumpers, things are a bit cool. It's a sunny day outside, but uh, it's still quite cool. So, what our project for today is, we're just going to interrupt our Arbor series for a, a quick little job. A friend of mine down the road, Bruce Witham, he's um, dropped me off this big, it's a number four um, Jacob's taper chuck. So what he wants me to do is make a short arbor for this so he can fit it in his small um, horizontal boring mill. So I've already turned and hardened the piece off camera. Now I've got it in the lathe there, we're just grinding the parallel and the tapered section. Now grinding the, the parallel section, I'm getting a, a slight taper put in in my lathe. Now I don't want to adjust the tail stock to take the taper out as it's only just under half a thou taper. So we'll show you how we're going to do it uh, with bits of paper and we'll sh we're going to actually shim the tail stock as I don't want to adjust it because when, the, when I'm turning in the lathe it's turning parallel but that varies too depending on what tool loading and what material you're turning to will influence that, well it does on my lathe anyway. So the other thing is too, the old lathe, she's um, Ship one of the bearings in the headstock, so I've lost my high speed range. And this morning, when I started grinding, she shit the electrical switch for reverse, so I've got to grind in the opposite direction rotation what I would normally grind with a spindle. Now, that quite often has an effect on your surface finish um, as it changes the, the cutting speed um, relation between your part and the wheel. So it actually slows down the cutting speed. So, anyway, we've um, it's not affecting the job. The finish is still coming out reasonable, good enough for what this has to do. So let's get over to the lathe, and we'll show you how we're going to get this taper out. So the parallel section we have to take down to 40 millimeters. So the slight taper that we've got in here. Um, 1.581 and 1.581 and a bit over a half, probably about six or seven tenths taper from small to big. So we've got to take a bit more off this end of the part. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a piece of cigarette paper under one under the rear of the tail stock, and that will bring the tail stock across this way. We'll slightly lift it and bring it this way. Yeah, just a small amount and that and we'll take a trial grind and hopefully we'll be cutting more off this end than this end. Okay so we take our part out. We'll just run our tail stock back a bit. So we have two pieces of cigarette paper here which will lay on the top of the V-way. Just bring our tail stock over the top of it. And the same for the rear. Just like that. Put our part back in. Okay, we'll take another trial grind. So I'll use a fat sharpie and we'll blue it up and then we'll be able to see, clearly see, where we're taking the material off.
Okay, that's looking good. So you can see we're taking it off the the larger end. So we'll take another, we'll keep going until we get a full clean up and then we'll take a measurement. So we've got 580, 581, maybe a tenth under, and 581, maybe a tenth under. So we've nailed it first time. Sometimes it can take a bit of mucking around to get that right. And it's, uh, no, we, we nailed it first time. So you can see, just bringing the tailstock, rocking the tailstock over. I mean, that cigarette paper is only one thousandth of an inch thick, and it's cured our our taper. So we now have a parallel section there. So we continue on now, and we take this down to finished size of 40 millimetres to suit Bruce's adapter in his horizontal borer. Okay we've redressed our wheel and we'll start cutting the Jacobs taper, number four Jacobs taper to suit the drill chuck. Right, we'll um, test our taper in Bruce's chuck here. So this is the JT4. So we'll just put a little wee bit of a bearing glue on it. Just a light smear. Drop it in. Do the twisty turny action. And we'll pop her out and have a look. So, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, where got more contact, that's all contact there, but not down there. So, that means we've got to bump our compound slide around, so it takes a bit more off the major end of the taper than the minor. Then that should give us full coverage. So, we'll do that and have another test fit. Okay, so we have our indicator stylus on the edge of the compound and we just take note of the reading on the indicator. So we'll loosen the compound and swivel it round. It's just a guesstimate. So we'll go probably, oh, I'd say we can go two, two thou on the indicator and we'll see where that leaves us on our part next time we grind it and blew it.
Now I didn't realise it, but when we were doing the last cut, the last grind, the belt guard was just starting to rub on the tailstock. So I have to remove the guard. I don't like doing it, but sometimes you have to, just to get that bit more clearance. So hopefully that didn't influence any of the, um, and throw any weight against anything and influence our taper. So we shall see. So we'll blow it up with the Sharpie and when we start grinding we should see the material coming off this end of the taper first. Right, here we are again. Okay, so this time we've got good um, 25 millimeters an inch of contact. see a bit of blue down in here which is 30 bit over 30 mil down okay so the blue we're that close the blue is starting to transfer from this last section here onto the bore down there so if we move our compound just a fraction more we'll, we'll be able to pick up that bit of the taper there so that's looking good, yeah, got good contact from there to there, so just that fraction more should give us full contact. So I'll go and bump that compound round a fraction more and take another test cut. So I had to pop the guard off as we were, had some contact issues running out of clearance between the guard and the tailstock here. Got our indicator set up the same. So that's small an amount. We might just go probably let's go a and a half. Okay, pop our part back in. I'm 
blew him up again. We'll try and contact the wheel up here first, but it's that small an amount we've changed the angle. It's possible it will grind the blue off the whole way down. So we'll try it. Okay, we'll take this over to the bench and have a test fit. Another one. <laughs> one thing I do is the flat that's ground on here, I don't know if you've noticed, every time I take this in and out, I always have the flat to the top, just so the part goes. I don't think it makes any difference, but uh, just one of those little things, so everything goes back in the same spot. Now, a little bit of bearing blue. Oh, that's lovely. We're getting 100% contact all of the way. So that's exactly what we're after. So all we've got to look at now is the major and minor diameters. So the major diameter, the end of a JT4, is 1.124 inches and the minor is 1.037. Okay, we're just doing the last few cuts now to bring the taper down to size. Okay, quick check on our size. So we're half a thou. We got about half a thou up. But that's fine because we're we're a few thou longer on length anyway. So that's our taper angle spot on, our major diameter spot on. If those two are spot on, the minor will be spot on. So all that's left now is a final test fit of the taper and then we'll just uh, grind a, a, a bit of a chamfer on the end here. So we'll take it over to the bench and have our final test fit. Okay, so when we set it, set the part in. We're getting a good 
good, a good fitment of type into the hull. So a bit of bearing blue for our final, final check. And it's all disappeared. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Let's put a bit more on. Okay, we've got, you won't be able to see into there, beautiful, perfect contact, the whole, the whole length of this. I'm getting 100% blue contact all the way down the bore of that. So it means we've hit, we've hit it spot on. So all I'll do now is I'll just put a chamfer on this. And then uh, Bruce can have his chuck for his boring machine. <laughs>